Hey everybody, Doug here. Really quick before we begin, I was contacted by my buddy Olo, who is the owner of the company A-Case, which makes uh, incredible like premium magnetic cases. It's the ones that I use to transport my armies. Uh, he hired me to do a video ad for him, and since I love supporting small businesses, I also wanted to do this little bit of a shout out. So, there is a short um, Kickstarter going on right now for Olo to uh, expand his business into doing painting handles. Now, you may have seen these. I've been using them quite a bit on my streams that I do. Um, and basically, they're really cool. They have these magnetic tops, so you can have up to five uh, dudes, assuming you only buy one set of these things. Um, and you can just quickly, you know, switch between models that you're working on. It makes painting squads really easy. Uh, this isn't a paid advertisement because he just paid me to make the ad. Uh, but I do appreciate small businesses and want to support them whenever possible. So if you are looking for a painting handle and you want something that is reliable and very cool, could not think of a better person to buy it from. So if you're interested, the link is in the description down below. I'll leave it there. And uh, now back to the show. Welcome Wargamers to the jiving and thriving suburbs of the mortal realms because today we are talking about the bright city itself, Hammerhall. Which is a name that I find just a little bit odd given the context of the city itself, but we'll talk about here in a second. Now why are we talking about Hammerhall? Well, in the most recent uh, White Dwarf magazine that came out, the same one that had the Beasts of Chaos, you know, uh, rules expansions or whatever, there was this very brief little article right before that section about the bright city itself. And this is something that uh, Games Workshop does every once in a while. Basically they'll pick a snippet of lore that exists somewhere. In this case, uh, a lot of it is in the Stormcast Eternal Battle Tomes, Cities of Sigmar, as well as some other, you know, here and there type things uh, about the city itself. And then just magnify it, clarify it, kind of bring it all together, give it a little bit more of a single succinct where how it got formed and, and where it is now. So I thought that I would take the cue and, you know, just kind of sum up all the lore regarding Hammer Hall itself. And it's a, it's a quite fascinating city. It's been around almost as long as Age of Sigmar has. And so let's talk about its little, you know, chronology. What well, we'll kick this off by, I'm going to try and cite my sources here if you are, uh, you know, kind of a lore hound trying to find my references. Uh, basically, the story starts in the Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome, talking about the Hammerhall section. And what we learn is, in the opening act of the Realmgate Wars, uh, which is basically when Age of Sigmar the game first launched, that first overarching narrative. Uh, Sigmar was sending down Stormcasts all over the place trying to secure Realm Gates just so he can have some form of transportation and explore new lands, set up supply lines, all that kind of stuff. And one of the realms he chose to start this invasion in, in force, is in Akshi, the Realm of Fire. Specifically, there was a gate he had in mind, one that linked right over to the Realm of Life in Giran. At that point in time, he had not found Alariel yet, but he knew that he wanted to kind of get the band back together of all the pantheon of gods, and she was going to be very important, so he's like, we need to have stable access to our allies. So he sends a bunch of Stormcast down to claim what is known as the Storm Rift Realm Gate. It's a, it's a massive, even for massive standards of Realm Gates, the kind of thing where an entire army basically can walk shoulder to shoulder right through the whole thing. If you see some artwork, I'll try to find it for this video, but it's, it's hard to find. But these Realm Gates can be colossal where you have entire, you know, skylines on the other side. So after Sigmar's initial, you know, push in the Realm Gate Wars, they secured the land. What's super interesting is that I didn't realize that the Cities of Sigmar Battle Tome points out that there actually was a Bone Splitters and Iron Jaws warband that worshipped this gate as Mork's Maw. The idea of like one part of their, you know, god pantheon of Mork, meaning from Gork and Mork and Gork and Morka. Uh, his, you know, Maw is up there in the sky and they always build like things that they see into this mythos surrounding their deity. It's one of my favorite things about the Bone Splitters specifically. But there's some on the Akshi side, there's some on the Giran side, and so part of it is like we just have to get rid of this entire mob. So, you know, it's one of those things like all the stories that we read during the Realm Gate Wars were like Order versus Chaos kind of a stuff, you know, um, Vandus Hammerhand versus Corgus Cole and all that kind of thing. And then we learn later, like, oh, there's this side quest of I'm just gonna go kill a bunch of orcs that are just doing nothing wrong and just chilling. Cool, 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 cool. I wanted to read that book, but all right, we'll, we'll stick with the chaos ones. 
Now, my understanding, the kind of clues that I get are that it looks like the initial founding probably happened on the Akshi side of things and then grew into the Realm Gate. Um, there's not a lot of evidence either way, but the two at some point early on started to grow communally. And the way that this functioned is pretty cool. Essentially, things were very hard to grow in Akshi. It's great for minerals and, and industry and stuff like that. There's lots of space. Like I said, raw minerals and metal deposits, that kind of stuff all over the place. It's not as unstable or transmutative as things in the realm of metal itself, but there are tons of resources available to you. But it's really hard to farm it. Enter a giant magical portal with a place that is perfect for farming and terrible for mining minerals and that kind of stuff, Giran. In fact, Giran was so bursting full with life power, because wherever this realm gate led to had not been touched by Nurgle yet, which is awesome. But their issue was the vegetation of the land encroaches on their farm fields way too much. Like the realm of life is, is so teeming with life, it, it's hard to manage as a farmer. So their solution is pretty clever. They um, basically build a lava aqueduct, if, if such a thing can exist, going from the realm of fire. It streams downward over like an enclosed bridge into the realm of Giran, and then they can channel it as they wish. And they use this fire to constantly be clearing, you know, the oncoming growth just to have their farmland which is like the most metal thing ever. Just like you're looking at your neighbor with his little dainty weed whacker. Meanwhile, you have a moat of lava around your place. That's just incredible. Good luck with the homeowners association, but you get points for Moxie. And so that's how the two really began to grow in tandem. You have the industry, the money-making side of things on the Akshi end, but that entire populace and that workforce, all that stuff, it demands an immense amount of food that has to be constantly available. Like for huge cities to grow, an immense amount of resources has to be very readily available. Flip to the other side where it's like, well, what we need is some protection against the elements, I guess you could say in terms of nature, you know, kind of reclaiming farmland. And we need weapons and we need technology and we need all these things. Now, what's also interesting about Akshi, aside from, you know, this is like the, the basics of how the city functions. So it's, it's one megalopolis that's in two realms, has a foot in each door, if you will. Well, we got a really great photo of the Akshi side specifically, and we have a little bit more detail into how they feel about this kind of coexistence that they're in. It seems, in general, that those on the Akshi side of things see themselves as sort of like the higher end, meaning um, the Akshi side is somehow superior to those like those gardeners, those green thumbs over on the other side. And this arrogance persists, even though it's a very overpopulated place. There's lots of grime and muck. Why? Because it's constantly raining ash and all these things. Like it's not a great like place to be sounding thing. It's just you know, you gotta have a little air of superiority. Like how all the East Coast states in the US all kind of hate each other, but like nobody's allowed to mess with one of them, otherwise you mess with all of them. That's basically, that's basically, you know, New York and New Jersey, those two, that's what Hammerhall, Akshi, and Gyra is. Just throw a turnpike on that uh, realm gate and the illusion is complete. But what I was actually going with that is that you then have two settlements that have completely different, like, I guess, not necessarily value systems, but things that are important to them. So, you know, farming, agriculture, how you work the earth, how you are using it up, how much soil you lose every, like, all that stuff matters to the gear and side. Um, how deep you can dig and, you know, resource harvesting and how much you can produce as a, on a factory level, that's what matters on the Akshi side. And so how those two things rationalize one another with one government in charge of both is a cool idea that I wish was explored more. Now, kind of transitioning from the established lore that we had into where we're kind of going now with the era of the beasts, uh, I get the sense that the next quote-unquote Cities of Sigmar battle tome is going to be much more focused on the Dawnbringer Crusades, simply because uh, they mention them a lot, and uh, just all over the place as much as possible anymore with the lore, so that kind of makes me think that's where we're headed. But the things that are relevant here about Hammerhall, actually specifically, is that overpopulation is actually becoming a real problem there. That there are these terrible, terrible slums and there's a lot of factory work and a lot of innovation, but with that comes pollution and, and crummy circumstances. And you know, this it's just a very rough place as most places in this setting really are. I mean, no, it doesn't have to be like dark or malicious. It's just, it's tough living. 
And so it should be very little surprise that Hammerhall actually specifically, or Hammerhall maybe in general, uh, has produced the most Dawnbringer Crusades uh, it, it, amongst any of the cities of Sigmar. Because as we covered in the Dawnbringer Crusades dedicated video, if you're not familiar with them, essentially when you sign up for them, you're, you're basically becoming a professional pioneer, no matter what your job before was, you're going out there and you're trying to settle a new outpost or town or city or something like that. Chances of success, very, very low. However, if you fail, you're just probably just dead. If you succeed though, you become one of the founding councils and, and rich folk who, you know, got in first before the next big city came in. So it's a big risk, big reward though. And you can set up your future generations of family for, you know, income in perpetuity. So like there's huge benefits to going. Now you pair that offer with a community that has a lot of fiery determination. Hey, oh, actually joke. But you mix that with people who see their lives as very short, very brutal, willing to work hard, and they just need a chance. Boom, you got a recipe for success. In fact, it gets to a point where it's a little bit like, I don't really like this kind of a thing. So in this article, one of the things they mention is that they have, you know, firebrand, I guess, preachers within the Azurite church go around and they're trying to whip people up into a frenzy to be like, yeah, we're going to go claim the realms. And so just kind of get them all excited and fighty. And so that's how they assemble their Dawnbringer crusades. I get the sense that it's uh, a matter of captivating a crowd just the right way. You have enough charisma. I pick a direction and that's where we're going. I love the book Dominion by Darius Hinks. I wish there was a, a short story that featured the head of the church's point of view, like what her, cause like basically in that story, we follow a Cities of Sigmar, you know, Dawnbringer crusade being planted in a new community erupting, but it didn't quite go right. And we only saw one side of that equation. We didn't see it from the church's perspective. That's what I would like to see. Because also in this article is a mention that the church essentially funds the press, uh, which has happened historically. It never ends well, but that's what it does. Um, and then they can promote and that kind of stuff and, and use propaganda as a real weapon, which we do in real life as well. And all of a sudden you're getting all just these tons and tons of people that are willing to join the Dawnbringer Crusades. They don't have anything, but that also means they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Their population is said in multiple places to be growing near exponentially. They can call in favors from various factions because by and large, it's a lot of humans, but also within the Akshi side, there's tons of Dwarden because it's there for their minerals and their forges and all this kind of stuff. You got fire slayers, of course, but over on the Giran side, you also have things like wanderers and the various elven communities that live there. So just kind of chatting about why is Hammerhall so cool. I mean, this article was about the Akshi side specifically, but overall there's just a lot of great story and unique elements to it that I find very interesting. A city that is uh, divided in a way that nothing, nothing else can be divided, right? They're like in different realms of existence. The cities on each side go completely 360 around each realm gate. And yet that exists in two places and they are one city. It's just a very strange thing how that leadership structure works, you know, and you know, I try not to get too wrapped up in the fantasy. Like I let some things be like, I'm not going to ask what their tax policy is or whatever like that. But when you have that kind of, you know, uh, worldview where your life is dependent on someone that you may never see, you may never cross into the gear and side. It's not like it's an open, you know, just kind of like walk down the sidewalk thing, but your life is inextricably linked to them and what you produce and what they can trade you for it. It's a it's an interesting like teamwork worldview that I think is very important. We also know from various sources it's a highly militaristic city. They keep constantly expanding. Like, like I said, their population is booming, and so they just spread outward, build new walls, spread out of from you know when it gets too cramped, they start building things outside the walls, build walls around that, and now we have our next district or whatever. There's a huge reserve of free guild soldiers just trying to have a job and stay fed and that kind of stuff. There's traders from everywhere. They have the Perspicarium, which is the Hammers of Sigmar uh, Stormkeep. It's overlooking the gate itself. So it's just like one of the best defended places in the Mortal Realms, which is so rad. And it just, it really does set it apart I mean, just inherently. But then when you stack on, you know, the uniqueness of their geography, I guess you could say, and their political structure where there's like 13 elders or whatever like that, uh, not elders, what are they called? Council members. 
all that kind of stuff. I think it makes for a compelling thing. And I don't know, I just saw it in the uh, the article through this white dwarf and I was like, man, I forgot how cool Axe she was. Like as much, as excited as I am to start talking about Dawnbringer Crusades once, you know, kind of the, the forward momentum kicks back into AOS lore. Um, I'm very excited about that, but at the same time, it's just cool to be reminded of like, oh man, there's so many cool things about this setting. Like this, the fact that this city exists and the way it functions. I love it. We can revisit some of those things and have uh, a cool discussion about how they're getting kind of brought forward into the current story. If you have any specific questions about Hammer Hall Akshi uh, or anything like that, you can read the tome yourself or you can uh, leave in the comments down below. I'll try to answer it for you. Thank you all so much for watching and listening and I'll catch you in my next Age of Sigmar lore video. Happy Wargaming.